three mass shootings in a week, two in 24 hours, followed by the predictable reactions, none of which get to the heart of the problem. For the Colson Center, I'm John Stone Street. This is Breakpoint. If only there were evil people somewhere insidiously committing evil deeds, Alexander Solzhenitsyn once wrote, and were only necessary to separate them from the rest of us and to destroy them. Well, of course, there are evil people. We know that far too well, especially after this past weekend. In fact, the fact that there are evil people out there might be the one thing, maybe the only thing that everyone still agrees on. Of course, we disagree from there on who the evil people are the evil shooter, the evil racist president, the evil progressives trying to take our guns. And so we go on and on identifying who the evil people are, always them. And then we go on and on missing the real problem that's right in front of our face. Solzhenitsyn's point wasn't, as some would argue, that people aren't really evil. Far from it. His point was that to assume evil exists only in them, whoever our them is, and not in us, well, that's just plain wrong. As he continued, the line dividing good and evil cuts through the heart of every human being. The finger pointing that immediately followed the mass shootings in Gilroy, El Paso, and Dayton started before any facts were known and came even quicker than usual. The finger pointers had already decided who the bad guys were, and many of us joined in on the chorus. And so we tweeted and reported and assumed the evil ones belonged to the other side while hoping they did not belong to ours. If it's discovered the evildoer does belong to us, well, we know how to twist and contort and accuse in order to explain any connection away. But if he belongs to them, well, we also know how to leverage that tragedy to indict the entire lot. I say all this as a Second Amendment guy. I fully agree that guns don't kill people, people kill people. You read the online manifestos of these young men and tell me that they wouldn't eventually find some other way to carry out their violent fantasies. And even if gun control were the answer, how would we ever go about implementing it? Does anyone really think that someone so radicalized in hate would trade in their weapons for a gift card? And at the same time, the idea that the best way to stop bad guys with guns is with good guys with guns, I think that needs to be reconsidered. Now, face value, of course, I fully agree. What I fear, however, is that those who are repeating it are often working off of old math. When bad guys are willing to target innocents, even children, at schools, movie theaters, churches, festivals, and Walmarts, well, what then? In Dayton, the good guys showed up one minute, one minute, and the bad guys still killed nine people. Facing that sort of evil, how many good guys with guns will we need to protect us? And where exactly do we need them? Everywhere? Look, that's called a police state. And that's the inevitable end of any society that sinks so deeply into moral chaos. If this is our fate, make no mistake, we'll have brought it on ourselves. And by we, I mean them and us. As the progressive left finds new ways to deconstruct the family, reconstruct morality, and scandalize the innocence of children at every level and in every area of culture, while demonizing their evil other by state force and financial ruin, the libertarian right demands unfettered license to say whatever and think whatever and post whatever on 8chan at once while demonizing its own evil other as the real cause for all of its so-called ills. All of this while the church faces scandal after scandal of its own making. And yet we wonder how lonely young men without meaning or moral formation or fathers who have no way to fulfill their pornographic-fueled fantasies but have access to plenty of self-medication options could be driven to white supremacist or progressive extremism. Look, we need to be asking what it is about our culture that's producing these young men bent on killing and chaos. And we need to ask, where is the church? Do we really think we're immune to the historically repetitive realities that's marked every crumbling civilization since the dawn of time? Do we really think that we can keep our freedom in a society not only without virtue, but without any of the little platoons that form virtue? Can freedom be sustained where virtue is not flourishing? Chuck Colson asked that question every time he spoke the last several years of his life. And the answer to that question is still, of course, no. As Chuck said, it's either the conscience or the constable, unless we're willing to look at us to, as Solzhenitsyn said, destroy a piece of our own heart, our future is looking increasingly obvious. Only Christ can restore this mess, and we must be about his work of restoration. For Breakpoint, I'm John Stone Street.